What is your biggest fear about the person sitting across from you? I would say my biggest fear is that you would not accept me ultimately for Hey guys and welcome back to Little Blair fucking know what time it is uh, We're talking to you guys today about Edwin and whether he cried tears of joy over joy Guys, if you're new to the channel, make sure you like, you share, subscribe, you click on that bell button for notifications are up, loads for more great content like this. And for those of you who are returning as well, you got the minerals, you got the minerals, you got the minerals. Guys, we appreciate you. Stay locked and stay loaded. Let's talk about Edwin and Joy and discuss um, the tear situation that happened at the very, very end um, as well. So Edwin and Joy, obviously for the past few weeks we've been watching them, have been growing closer. Edwin has been putting in, you know, work rate to try and level himself up to the a point of Jay. And what I wanna point out to you guys is this, um, about relationships. Unless Jay decides he's exiting the race, Edwin never wins. Let me say it again. Unless Jay decides to exit the race, uh, uh, Edwin will never win and the reason why is because when people make up their mind they've made up their mind I made up my mind to go God's way for the rest of my life that note was off there Edwin but anyway listen they've made up their mind to go right like the same with uh, Carfani and, and Adriana um, same with Rashid and Adriana like when someone says uh, you know they've when people make up their mind they go with their mind they've gone Nothing stopping them unless Jay does something absolutely funkadelic and mad. That's the only way Edwin will get. And even then, she would consider Edwin not the ideal choice. Because the truth of the matter is, there is no ideal backup. There is none. There is none holy as the Lord. Sorry, I'm in church mode. But there is none that is an ideal backup for you. Yeah, none that is an ideal backup that you'd want to go for. Right? There isn't any. Oftentimes, we have a number one that is very clear. He's far or she is far ahead of anybody else. And so the same thing here. Edwin is a good backup when she says to him later on, oh, Edwin, you're a good man. I appreciate you too. You're, you're a really good guy. Da, da, da. Yes, and yeah, you're a good man, but she ain't going to, she ain't going to make you, she ain't going to make you hubby. She ain't gonna make, she ain't gonna allow herself to be wifey. Why? Because, okay, there is no great idol backup. There is no good uh, number two that you have here. Just look at your life and look at relationships. Look at the um, situations that you have. When you see these guys that you're going after, or these girls that you're going after, you'll realize, yeah, I got three or four on a rotate, like they say, these guys. I got three or four that I may be liking. But really and truly, are they all potentials? Really? Very rarely will you have a number one and a number two that you say, actually, if I've got number two, I'll be satisfied. I'm not satisfied with where I, I've been. I don't know why church songs are coming out. Anyway, so, um, you know, I wanted to make that point very clear. So, obviously, watching uh, Edwin and Joy, before we even got to that stage, there was a conversation between Jay and Joy that was really interesting, right? Jay came over to Joy to give her the heads up that, listen, if you see me walking, Walking down the street and I start to cry each time with me. So walk on. Okay, now I can start. <clears throat> so if, uh, Jay said, obviously, uh, Jay went over to Joy and he saw and he said, obviously, to her, listen, look, if you see me talking uh, with someone else, just know, obviously, it's not that. It's not adapting, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I got if you, you see me walking with somebody else, you know what happened. Here right, we go. I it's not adapting, yeah? Um, I'm literally just doing that because obviously what the task was given to me by Tommy, right? So if you see me walking on the street and you better walk on by, doom, 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 you better walk on by, foolish girl. Okay, all right, so look, like he, he made her know straight away, hey, look, before you get another idea, I want to let you know from the jump, it ain't like that. I've been given a task and I want to let you know this is where I stand. So let, let me just show you. Jay just showed Joy where his heart lies. Jay just showed who's his number one. You see, if Jay wasn't a play plating, and I mean a full on plating, he would have never let um, Joy know. If he really wasn't a full on play thing, he would have never let Joy know. And the reason why he would never let her know is because he doesn't want it to be a sticky point later on. So he doesn't let her know. So he, does, so he lets her know so that she knows where she stands with him. So there can never be a conversation later on like, oh, Jay, you never told me that you were going to be out here with winter. Da, da, da. No, 
listen, you see me dating everything like that, blah, blah. And that is backed up by what happens later on when he's in a tavern and says, obviously, look, hey, guys, um, I couldn't kiss her fully because et cetera, et cetera, right? But the reason why I'm talking about this is because when he says that point, that is going to solidify Joy's position as choosing Jay. Now, she had already chosen Jay long before this, but it's another nail in the coffin, you know what I mean? It's another nail uh, in the coffin. Do you know what I'm saying? So when you like someone, look, ladies, listen to this. Watch this. When the guy likes her, look at the respect. Look at the respect that he had enough to go and tell her, I don't want beef later on. So let me tell you now, this ain't what it is when you see it. He let her know straight away because he didn't want the, the bar in. Okay, um, but what was interesting was that when Jay was talking, she was like, oh, um, Joe was like, yeah, but Jay, you've been, you, you know, it's nothing, you've been walking with other people. And it was a slight little dig. And I think the slight little dig became because she herself had committed to Jay um, and Edwin was never really getting that chance again. She was entertaining it, keeping herself in the game, playing the game, but Edwin was never going to get the chance. Jay had always been number one, okay? Um, and so that was a little bit of a comment there, a little stab there, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and so, you know, that that was a really big thing. But now on to Edwin and Joy, they get to have this dinner date. And what's really interesting is that the questions that get asked. And, um, you know, I know that obviously Joy was saying, obviously, you know, she's at the back of her mind. She's still weighing up the options because, you know, uh, you know, Jay's still basically she weighed up. She's only weighing up her options because Jay's weighing up her options again. Remember, I told you guys about insulating you in these games. You insulate yourself by making sure that you have other pillars that support you, that give you strength and give you give you a leverage, but also as well, make sure that you don't act too needy for that other person. Like, hey, I still got options, boo. Don't play with me. I still got options, which is why when when you are on this dating game, and you're dating several people. It, it helps you because you're not too needy. When someone's only got one option, though, they put all their eggs in one basket and all the energy can go to that person and it can end up, they can end up being too needy. Okay. And I'll, I feel some type of way about that. You hear me, Tommy? Okay. Good. I say they can. You know what I mean? Um, it doesn't it's not like it happens always. But when you've only got one option, it can make you. It can make you desperate. It can make you over needed. It can make you want to, 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 to focus too much on that person when you've got no other focus. Which is why you need to be on your focus. Which is means you have to be on your grind, on your path, on your destination, on where you need to be. Do you know what I mean? So that stops the whole focus being about that person and making that person your whole world. So if anyone's watching this, listen, if you've got a habit of making an individual person in your life, someone who romantically is involved in your life, even friends or family in your life as the epicenter of your whole entire life, the, uh, the answer to that particular uh, problem is having a focus that drives you just as much. So some of you, it is your career. Some of you, it's your, uh, it's your kids. Some of you, it's your... It, it's a, a new business you're starting. Some of you, it's, uh, you know, to lose weight and to get yourself out of physique and shape. Have something that is going to drive you. I want to say the top answer for this, our survey said, choo, 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 is purpose. When you're on your purpose, when you're on your, your, your destination, your destiny, it is very much more easier to deny things that are coming in because they do not meet where you're meant to be going. So I'm saying this because I'm watching Edwin and Joy and I can see that obviously that Edwin's now left with only Joy. So that's his last stab in the dark. He's he's keeping her, he's keeping as much as he can in the game, but really and truly he hasn't got any more um any more uh pillars. The rest of it's gone, isn't it? You have vowed to never repeat the mistakes from your past marriage. What are those mistakes? I neglected myself and put put his needs before mine. Okay. When I... Mistakes that she made in the past in the marriage. And, you know, she said, obviously, that she used to put her man before her, right? And let me tell you something. There's actually nothing wrong with that. What's wrong with it is when you put yourself, put him before you, but he's not doing the same thing. That's where the issue lies. The issue lies because, see, in, in, in Christendom, the whole point of our relationship is that we have an act of servitude. We have an act of a servant. And the servant serves. He puts the master first. 
But if you have the attitude of Christ in you, the Bible says that, listen, Christ, even though, um, you know, was equal to God, Philippians 2, he made him, he, he said, he said, he said, he said, no, I'm, I, I know that I'm equal, but I'm going to put on the hat of a servant and I'm going to be of no reputation. I'm going to come down low and I'm going to serve. When he does that, what do we do in response? We serve. No matter how great he is, he decided to serve us first. And doing that, we served him. How many times have you been to, let's say, a dinner, right? Or we see a film and, and the husband's like, I want the wife, to, the wife to serve me up. Okay, she serves him up. Does he serve her back? No. Right. And I'm not I'm not cussing gender roles, but I'm just I'm just giving you an example that the serve and, and, and service you can be in other ways. It doesn't have to be on a dinner table. I'm just kind of giving an example. But the best relationships you're going to ever have in your whole entire life is when both of you are trying to serve one another, which is why I said about the fact that, yes, I get roles. But when the new 2020 right now, roles can't be stagnant. <laughs> Women are working you know, as well as having children. So man them, you got to get ready, and prepared to work, not only at the workplace, but when you get home, how do you help the wife look after the children? If you've got some, how do you help the wife clean up? How do you help the wife cook as well? Because you're going to need a road top because it cannot be only one person. The wife cannot do it all. She will not have the strength to do it if you've got a two-parent income household please man them if you're listening to this i know some of you ladies are like well i want a man that's gonna um, pay all the bills not everyone's so blessed to have that so please open your ears the serving is in both formats find somebody who's just as selfless as you so that you can serve together in your relationship i don't know how did i even get here I don't know how I got it. Oh, because of what she said. Yeah. So, um, you know, so she said about putting the man before her. Nothing wrong with that. But when you get the wrong person who's selfish, who only cares about themselves and being served, who only cares about being a master, who only cares about lording their, their, their strength or their position over you, then yes, you'll get this scenario. That's why, you, that's why we look for relationships with God in it. Because when God instructs a person, he lets them know, listen, you are not better than other person. You're just playing a position. If I'm a man in my relationship, I'm not better than my wife. I'm just playing a position Okay um, And then she mentioned the fact that When she's in love She's all in You know um, She's 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 all in She's full on um, You know All batting for the team And I respect that as well I think we should always be In that kind of place When I Am tuned into someone mm -hmm. They get all Of me In oh. that moment And That can be a good thing It can be a bad thing what she mentioned was the fact that obviously how does she like, you know, I don't know what what, what it was said, but it's like she said, obviously she prays, meditates. And then she also said her therapist is huge. And I think for a lot of people, especially in the black community, therapy is, I think, <laughs> should be, you know, without, you know, quoting Kevin Samuels. Uh, everybody needs a therapy, man. Not just women, men too. We all need therapy. We all need to be in therapy. And I'm going to I'm going to start mine soon because I think I need to have a little bit of therapy just to see how it goes. Exercise some some thoughts and some memories. So, you know, what I'm saying see how, how best I can be, you know, helped as well, you know. But, you know, the fact that she's doing this therapy and has a therapist just shows how committed she is to change mentally. And what's interesting is when she spoke about that with um, Edwin and the fact that Edwin said, obviously, he's willing to take it on since she is so passionate about it. He's willing to take it on. Now, he's willing to change simply because of Joy's presence. When you find someone like that, it can be one or two things. Either you're softy and you change for everybody and every woman that comes to your life, you change for them. Or you found somebody who genuinely is good, who's pleasing, who is um, worthy of, you know, the, the, a listening ear from you to say, actually, part of my life does need to change. That person is saying some truths that are resonating with you. Do you get it? Just really appreciate Edwin because he listens to me and he receives the feedback interesting obviously because you know Ed, she said obviously that edwin listens to her feedback and you know he receives it and she appreciates that and i think you know because it was earlier on it was a few episodes ago when we saw him sitting with simone talking about therapy i think he said he didn't go he hasn't gone therapy yet or he has gone therapy or whatever right but we knew that obviously he had gone only for one session because i think he mentioned this to joy later on um and so for him the pt the ptsd i think that like i said is that is a stumbling block between himself and jay uh, i mean her him and, and joy that's another stumbling block it's not the only one it's another standing stumbling block as in she doesn't want to go to a place where the work, the field has not been, you know, carefully, um, you know, prodded and 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 
and cleaned and, and thoroughly gone through. You know what I'm saying? Like she wants to make sure that soil is right. Um, and that's important for her because that means that the person who she's engaging has done work and made sure that they are the best representative they can put in a relationship. And so Edim answered the question about what makes him scurred. I don't really ask people for help for anything. Mm -hmm. When it comes down to, to anything, if I'm going through a financial situation, Edwin is going to always figure it out. I think he knows that I do care about him and I don't know if he's... It comes from pride and that pride often comes from being alone or having to figure out stuff from a very young age. It makes you independent very, very quickly. When you've had to do a lot of things in your youth by yourself without the support of a parent giver or a enough support from a parent giver, you learn how to be independent quickly because you know life comes at you real quick you know life ain't asking questions whether whether you know you can get that support life just comes at you you ain't got a choice man up woman up or die here and rather than most of us dying we man up we find a way to get through the challenges and then we become very independent but that independence then comes with pride that pride tells us listen i can do it all by myself all by myself all right that note was off but don't worry about that you know we, we think we can do it all by ourselves, and therefore now sits this pride here that says you are independent you don't need help and when you do need help you drown instead of saying help me stay afloat because that's what pride will do to you it pride makes us um you know pride comes before fall right um and so he mentioned about his biggest fear um, about the person sitting across from him, which was uh, Joy. And he said, not being accepted for who he is, but because he himself um, is to do more with himself. And so I think the reason why he feels Joy will not accept him is because he doesn't accept himself. If that, if you're saying it's mostly with you, I'm, I'm assuming that what he meant there is that I, I don't think you're going to accept me because of I don't accept myself. Like, let me tell you something. I know that not everyone's going to accept me as a partner wise. I'm a very enigmatic, energetic, out there, busy, the bozzy. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, and it's not everyone that is going to be the cup of tea, but I've accepted who I am, right? Is that you would not accept me ultimately for who I am. But then I think that doesn't have anything to do with you that has to do with me. Mm. So when someone accepts me, I'm not going to reject that acceptance because I know I've accepted myself. I'm cool with it. But oftentimes what happens is when we don't accept ourselves and people accept us, we reject their acceptance because we have not accepted ourselves. So how can you accept me if I haven't accepted myself? How can you love me when I haven't loved myself? How is it you're able to do what I couldn't do? And then we self-sabotage, right? Um, and so... You know, right to the very end scene where, um, you know, they start crying and he says, you know what, he really appreciates her and adores her and they hugged as well. Um, and what he said was that she makes him a better man. But what was really interesting was what she said here. Um, you know, she was saying, obviously, how, what do you feel your position is in relation to us? And the way he spoke, it sounded like he knew that this was the end. You know what I'm saying? Although we've come to the end of the road, still I can let go. It's unnatural. Joy, you belong to me. Okay, cool. Um, so, you know, for him, it sounded like he had come to the end of the road. Um, you know, the way he, it's almost as if he was accepting um, the, the defeat in the face of things, right? It, it, so some of the things that he was saying, I was like, does he know, is he accepting defeat here? Is he knowing that actually, do you know what, to be honest, uh, the way he spoke about the adoring and the hugging and, you know, and then she said he's a good guy. It sounded like they both accepted like, hey, we're not going to progress further than this. We know we're friends. We know we're not going to be lovers. We know we're not going to make it. We already know this. And the way they were ending the conversation sounded like that. I think that's why the tears really came, you know, as well. Um, you know, he said, he said, I've got to get out of my own way. And I was like, get out of your own way? What does that mean? I think that was code for, I understand my position, you know. Um, and also as well, the things that I need to, to do, I need to do the therapy and stuff like that. Until then, I know that I'm not going to be, you're not going to allow me to enter the sphere with you one to one. Um, and so I want to end it there and say to you guys, look, you know, do the work. Before you get into a relationship, do the work. Get into the work. Work it out. Do the therapy you need to do. If you're broken, you're hurt, 
Go and do it. If you're aware of it, <laughs> um, you know what I'm saying? Because some, some people don't know. They're not aware of it. That's truthfully as it is. But go and do that work. Go and do the therapy. Go and heal. Yeah. Do the work with time. And over that, it should bring a better you. Guys, make sure you stay locked, stay loaded. We appreciate you. And we'll talk soon. Appreciate you guys, baby. Make sure you uh, log into the Patreon, baby. Little Black with 91, baby.